The images of the Good Shepherd were once images that made complete sense. Now, if you were living in Jesus' day, they would have made complete and total sense. Even if we were living 200 years ago, these images would have been completely understandable. Everyone would have known someone who was a shepherd. Everyone would have spent time near sheep that were grazing. But that is not our reality today. So much so that when I was in Germany last spring and I was looking across the Rhine River, I could not believe what I was seeing. I made Phil take a look and double check what I was seeing and indeed, indeed it was sheep grazing on the other side of the river where they use the sheep to keep the grass levels down. But because this imagery is not fresh in our minds, we have to do a little bit of translating, if you will, so that it can make sense with us. Now, as I talked with the children about or a little bit earlier in the service, sheep are prone to wandering around. They're prone to just sort of wandering off from the shepherd and doing their own thing. The shepherd is the one who keeps them together, protects them from animals that might be out to get them. So when we drift, God straightens us out. When we are facing danger, God is with us. When we are uncertain about our futures, God promises to never leave us alone. Even when we are facing death, God promises to walk with us, to accompany us in our times of grief and in our fears. The image of Jesus as a gate reminds us that Jesus provides us with a way to live, that he has provided us with an opening uh, through his teachings that leads us to the realm of God. Now this teaching was intended for those who follow Jesus. It was not intended to bash other people over the heads with this teaching. This teaching was intended to remind the followers of Jesus, that's us, that when we go through the gate that Jesus provides us, we will find on the other side a comforting pasture. So while these images are not ones that we would immediately use to understand God, they work with it. They, we can work with it and they help us to understand our God. God provides us with the things that a shepherd provides sheep. Jesus is the gate that provides us with a vivid reminder that his way leads us to life. But what about us? What are we supposed to do? Now it's really great and important that we bask in God's care, that we cherish God's call for us. It's really good, it's really important to do that. But what are we called to do? Hear these words written by Marian Ter Marin Tarabasi from a poem called, It's Familiar. When the community is a shepherd, then no one will want. Imagine everyone having a safe place to lie down, water to drink, education to restore the soul, and a meaningful path of work or retirement for God's sake, God's sacred. There are many dark valleys of illnesses, loss, depression, addiction, or fear. But when there are companions with a walking stick of guidance, a staff of assistance, there is comfort. Imagine the community's table is set with generosity that changes enemy to friend the greatest honor anointing a stranger and every empty cup of the most vulnerable overflowing. Surely then our breaking bread and all of our prayers will mean something and our neighbor's goodwill follow. 
No one will worry about personal God's house dwellings. As the community's hospitality to others, day by day, by day, by day, and all our lives long. Friends, that, that is the world to which we are called. We are called not only to have God as our shepherd and us be the sheep, but for us to shepherd our whole community so that not only we have green pastures to lie safely and comfortably in, but everyone has that comfort to lie down in. Let us bask in God's green pastures and work to create that world today. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.